been recently chosen to be a part of the Act 1 Ethics Studies Working Group, working on Vermont's education quality standards, and I've also been a part of changing the school curriculum multiple times. <laughs> like childhood abuse and childhood trauma and stuff like that. I've also designed a lot of websites for nonprofits. Uh, I participated in the Max Tracy mayoral campaign in Burlington. We lost by 200 votes total. Getting the most powerful seat in the biggest city in the state is a deep regret, but I learned a lot, and that's good. Over the 2020 election year, I was working on a political campaign for a state rep in Vermont, and I, well, she won. Um, I think society in general, sort of, there is this general attitude, which I can observe, which is, um, you know, the, the older you get, the more conservative you become. Or it's sort of like talking about like the flame of passion dying out. And to an extent, um, I think because of that, there's like an amount that, you know, we're looked down upon. Because it's it's this idea like, oh, you'll learn. Right now, your ideas aren't really all that valuable, but you'll learn. Hey guys, it's Sally and Kate, and we're here to take you on a journey of youth activism and essentially what we've learned throughout the course of our documentary. So we started our documentary with the goal of finding out how youth activism is viewed and how it can be improved. And we especially wanted to focus on how it is viewed by kids and youth who partake in it and adults who are also involved in it and who observe it. So we started off with talking to youth that are involved in activism and have their voice heard and we wanted to hear what they thought about how activism itself is viewed and why it was important to have youth be involved. And we found out that it wasn't really what we thought. Youth involvement in activism is one of the most important things, honestly. I mean, if we don't educate and bring in and include the younger voices, we are seeing it now, like there's so much that our politicians and our change makers in this world never thought to listen to and I think our generation has this new viewpoint on the world where we see change as doesn't take long. Our politicians, our change makers, everyone, our leaders, they are having trouble seeing that. So when the youth have an idea that they want to strive for change, it's important that they're provided the platform, the space. I think the youth have started to realize that they don't need to depend on adults as much to do what they need to do. So they've become a more powerful, a more powerful, like, I don't want to say coalition, but like, it's like, it's, 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 it's a like, coalition. It's like a group yeah. of people where we all like, understand each other. It's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> they've kind of become separate from the adults when it comes to activism, but not in a bad way. I hope that activism becomes more comfortable. Times where um, adults will kind of just brush it aside and say like, yeah, you know, it, you're just one of those loud mouthed young people, you, you don't really matter. And I think it's hard to, um, to try to push back but then you just have to show them that like yeah I'm a young person but I'm also educated and I understand what the problem is and I have solutions and I think once you get past that like bias that adults have in their heads that youth can't like can't be the same as them I think once you get past that it's like there are some really good relationships and you're able to make real change happen. I think that youth now with being so involved in activism we're creating a new generation a new way to look at politics young people are exceptional and that like we all have the power to be activists but i think that society sometimes sees it as though like 
yeah, activism isn't like on the norm. It's just what a few random kids are doing and like they're isolated from the rest and it's like we don't have to listen to them. But I think that's not true. And I think a lot like more and more people are realizing that like all a lot of youth care about these issues. Okay, so after talking to youth, there was one overwhelming message, and that was many of them don't think that adults are as apt to really consider their voices because of their age. They think that while sometimes youth voices are added just to have that token youth voice, it's not actually being heard. And so our goal was to really talk to adults who have been involved in involvement with youth projects and to have also just like done community engagement beside youth and we really wanted to hear why they think it's important to have youth be involved and if they want to have youth involved and how we can really kind of merge adults and youth together um and that's not to say that all the youth thought that was the case there are a few youth that do think that adults are really good resources and are apt to listen to us but we just might have to push a bit harder as youth to make our voices heard so adults can really hear what we have to say. So our goal was to hear kind of what's the truth and how adults really feel about our involvement. Um, I've been a history and philosophy teacher and I've been very interested throughout my career, but I'd say really in the last 15 years, really interested in how to develop student leadership, student agency, and using student voice to transform teaching and learning. Uh, students, youth, the people who you know are in these schools, you know, the majority um, have some great ideas about how to change them. You know, as much as I see my role as a teacher as um, teaching students what they need to know to be better citizens, we're also reconciling with the fact that they are human beings uh, with their own brain that craves. No. I think that, um, you know, the place where youth spend a lot of their time, schools, um, particularly with adults who aren't their parents, um, should be sites for students to learn about the world and learn how to make it better. It's just, I mean, I don't know how anybody can look at society and be like, wow, we nailed it. Like, this is the best it's ever going to get. You know, there's just so many, there's just so much injustice. I think that there's some adults who see this as a, as a major um, opportunity and, and do stuff with students. Mm -hmm. I think that they're very limited by um, other adults and the system that we're all part of. Students, um, you know, depends on the, on the, the school and whatnot, but um, I think that by the time, you know, I think students have a growing sort of social awareness um, going into, say, young adolescence, which is where really where my heart lies. Um, so middle school, high school, I think by the time that they're um, ready to kind of demand that they're able to, to participate in this kind of stuff, um, many of them are already sort of jaded about the possibilities of what could happen in school. I think, you know, one really good example is um, what happened in this community around um, a school um, name. Had a, I'm saying we had an elementary school by the name of Thatcher Brook Elementary School. The, it's no longer named the Thatcher Brook Elementary School. And the reason was because there were students at Harwood who were deeply disturbed about the fact that Thatcher Brook the school was named after was a slave owner. Through a local community organization called the Waterbury Area Anti-Racism Coalition, um, it was brought to light that that uh, name of that school was named after a, a, a slaveholder. 
so this person Partridge Thatcher mm -hmm. um, and so that group said well we should really bring this to the community and see what what the community might want to do about that and um, a high school student from the high school uh, Harwood High School um, was involved in that group got together and, and when I say we I say myself and Harwood kids and life because life was a sort of a community partner mm -hmm. his organization in Harwood we co-sponsored this we had several large planning meetings but was this was driven by kids who say we want to have a discussion these are the things I think we should talk about the kids helped design the publicity they helped design the discussion questions and then we had a training that was really important so we had two facilitators in each group we had a lot of publicity about this event when our school board voted to proceed with establishing a committee to change the name of the school. I think, you know, schools can start to lay the, the foundations for what these kind of partnerships could look like, whether it's those community conversations or in other cases, just, you know, students doing projects in the community to try to improve it. Um, start with the schools and then whether it's through other organizations like our you know anti-racism organization or 4-h or whatever it is um you know that just becomes part and parcel of you know some of the threads of how the community operates um i'm convinced that if students hadn't started this this just would have been a wor a murmur rather than a shout to change it so if you can form a partnership you know i think of it more as um a mentorship model. I mean, I've been studying this for these ideas, these systems, these social systems, how the system really works for like 30 years, you know, trying to grapple with what's going on, how does this work? And, and you learn some things over the years. So I think, I think a partnership is extremely important. You have kids that are coming to you that saying, I want to make a change. We have to listen to those voices, I believe. We, we, we can't marginalize student voice. We have to celebrate student voice. So, you know, it really, I'm, I'm a huge fan of partnership, which, you know, can, can see, you know, it's, it's really hard to strike that balance of how much do the adults in the building help and provide guidance and how, you know, how much is too much, you know. Um, but if you can somehow create moments where you feel like you're, you know, the best moments ever for me <laughs> have been um, in meetings, real meetings with real people from students from multiple schools who are getting to know each other and breaking through like the whole school identity mm -hmm. and finding common ground in a cause, working with community partners and teachers who are all, who, who all really do respect each other and realize that they're all, they're all have something to bring, but they're all flawed and that we can like have a really great conversation and make decisions and plan big things. I mean, that's like, it's the sweet spot that, you know, that it's been hard to recreate during COVID. Um, so yeah, I, I like to think of it more as like an apprenticeship model, you know, like I'm teaching how to be a blacksmith and there's some, some things I need to teach you and show you and then I'm gonna let you go and then eventually you're gonna be doing things that I could never do and it's awesome, you know, and I'll be learning from you and then that whole thing will, flip on its head and sometimes it'll be weeks before that happens and sometimes it'll be this like ongoing evolution you know after interviewing a bunch of youth activists from around vermont we kind of got the feeling that they didn't really think that a lot of adults were open to the idea of them helping out and they didn't think that youth actress were as well respected. So when we brought that idea to the adults, they had quite a different story. They were eager and ready and hoping that different students would come to them and they'd be able to work on projects together. So after interviewing both adults and student activists, we took this idea back to some of the student activists and wanted to know what their thoughts were on this concept, on why student activists don't think that adults want to hear their voices and why adults are ready to hear them. I'm not 
that surprise because I think that adults are excited to work with kids and they want to hear their voices and with this whole booming era of youth voices, I think that um, I think that youth voices are just the new like norm in terms of youth and adults working together. I think that a lot of Gen Z especially um, with their work it might be seen by other kids around our same age but making that extra push to uh, making sure that our work is seen by other age groups will automatically help um, those adults to see that we are making change and that our work is valuable and in turn they will also help um, to read that will help them reach out to us um, in the future. If um, just one side's working towards um, like that communication, then it won't work as well as if like both parties are like trying to get on the same page with. Uh, I would say that there definitely is already a relationship and a connection oh, yeah, between adults way. and students. Um, yeah. Just from my experiences, uh, like in middle school, I did get to go to the state clubs and work with Senator Lesman, who is Stowe's. Um, representative in the Senate. So I think that there is a connection. So after we finished our video and interviewed everyone that we wanted to, we kind of found that there was this big problem in Vermont where everyone wants to help and make some kind of a difference, but no one really knows how. Um, and we kind of just came up with the idea that we need to start reaching out. We need people to go to different groups and try to prove that we are better together as a group and working towards one goal than in multiple groups trying to solve the same goal. Yeah, and so I think the main thing we kind of took away from this process and doing these interviews is that it's kind of a naivety on both sides. So you think that adults aren't very interested in hearing what they have to say, and adults think that youth aren't really interested in getting involved or aren't really there to help create change but both people, both parties really would like that help and they would like that other opinion. They just don't know how to access it. And so the main goal we have through this documentary is to just share that the most important part is reaching out. We think that through collaboration, the most important um, strides and activism can be made. And it's about, you know, youth to having the courage um, initiative to reach out to adults and adults also having, you know, the ability to see that younger generations do have really valuable things to say and reaching out to them. So it's about creating space and really looking towards other people as resources. Um, and I think that overall we've just learned that there isn't really a youth activism versus an activism. Activism is its one, its own all-encompassing category and we shouldn't see youth activism as something else and we all should just work together towards what we want to see change in our world.